another criticism came from someone who claimed to have first-hand experience with geological field work in this region of Spain. He too mentioned the sedimentary layering as a glaring hole in my theory, but also added that the limestone I claimed to be titan bone had instead formed just as mainstream geology tells us, through the compression of shells, mollusks, skeletons, and coral. Though he conceded that he had never actually visited Montco, he had on numerous occasions seen examples of this sort of limestone with his own eyes and told me condescendingly that if I had just taken the time to look through a microscope as he had done, I would have found the fragmented remains of smaller creatures. A quick image search appeared to confirm his claims. Many shell and bone fragments can be seen in limestone with the naked eye. I knew that if he was correct about the limestone on and around Mont Go, it would debunk my theory that the stones were fragmented pieces of titan bone. The cortical and trabecular bone findings figured prominently in my coincidence list, and I was aware that if I were to find fragments of bone or shell in the stone, it would mean that I would have to throw out a dozen or so of the items on my coincidence list. I originally presented my findings on the subject of cortical and trabecular bone in detail in the fourth Unveiling a Titan video. After years of hiking this mountain, especially these last few with new eyes, I've examined these stones very closely on many occasions. Never have I seen any signs of smaller creatures embedded in or composing the rock. I reviewed the footage I'd already gathered, zooming in on pictures I'd taken to get a closer look. There were no signs of smaller fragments of bone. On my next hike, I got up close and examined numerous examples with the naked eye, again finding no hint of what he had claimed I would see. And so I ordered a 60x microscope, which could attach to my phone, and went back out into the field. I thought surely that 60x magnification would be enough to spot shells or skeletal fragments. I have to admit, I was rather nervous when I first began to use the microscope. Could I have really missed something so simple? And now I'm on the plana, the plateau, right in front of this beauty. So this is actually a prime example. You've got these different holes, and then you can see these lines, and then there's the, the iron ore, which I believe is the, the blood. And then those channels go in, and then they get smaller and smaller. And you um, can see here on the back side that there's, there's an accumulation of this iron ore right inside of the channel. That's a, just a clump of iron right there. Um, and then a little hole going in there. So I believe this is trabecular bone. And those are blood vessels. And blood. So I'm going to look at this up close now with the microscope and see if there's any hint. I mean, you can see as I get in close, there's no hint of of any kind of shells, coral, mollusk, any of it. And I would expect there to be little tiny ones sticking out. Um, here is a little chip missing. And it looks like it came from right there. So even that looked like it might have been a... It's just a piece of the... You can see the, the continuation there of the line right there. So that broke off. But everything else, it's, it's totally smooth. Except when you go down to one of the sides, you'll see that it's, it's broken. Whoops. <clears throat> It's broken, like you can see the fragments under here, and the red. So that that's that portion is broken, but this this is intact and smooth, and uh, you can see just how how uh, biological and organic. Like those are blood vessels, right? And then as you move in closer, you see all this micro micro lines going in all kinds of different directions just like you'd expect blood vessels to do and then the iron ore etc etc so let's take a look at this rock with um with a microscope and see see what it looks like all right so i picked this rock as a 
sample to uh, start with because it really embodies everything that I've been showing with both the trabecular and the cortical bone. You have examples of, of large, what I would call blood vessels, smaller ones. You've got these lines of iron ore stretching all throughout and the, the quartz crystal as well, so the, the blood and the plasma. We've even got some fractures here. The top is, is smooth and has this biological look and we'll be looking at the side in a moment. Uh, and initially I just went into one of the, the, the general areas that didn't really have anything distinct. And uh, this is what I found. So you can see that uh, there isn't any hint of, of any shell or coral or mollusk. Now this is one of the little iron channels. And a little bit of a look at the, the quartz lines. And again, a, an iron ore channel. This is 60x magnification. You can see as it starts to, to break down, this is, this, if you rub this with your finger, it's like, it's, it's like dirt, like dust. So now I'm going to go in on, on the, uh, the white here. More of the iron ore channels. And this is really looking at the quartz now. And then for these next few pictures I go in on this area because my thought was okay well if this is eroded maybe it's rubbed away any traces of um, of shell coral mollusk uh, but they should be visible here in a in a fracture and there is nothing Realizing that 60x magnification would not be enough to prove unequivocally that there were no traces of smaller creatures embedded in the stone, I decided to look into a higher quality microscope. After a quick search online, I found an amazing Wi-Fi enabled microscope capable of 1000x magnification. A week later, it arrived, and I was able to repeat the tests. These are the results. This is what I would call the, the cortical bones. I would expect it to be a lot more compact, except for some larger blood vessels. Um, and of course the micro blood vessels, but you can see there's some crystal there, some quartz accumulations, and there's also a little bit of iron ore right in the same spot. So that's the, the plasma and the red blood cells. Um, the top has that that biological look to it. So I'm going to be looking at, at the top. I'm going to be looking at the sides. Okay, so just to give you an idea of how amazing this microscope is, these are some hairs on my forearm. <laughs> um, and this is a, a little, it was, it was a little flower bud that was about one millimeter in diameter. And this is the wing of a gnat. So you can see just how amazing this little Wi-Fi microscope is. If you got kids, uh, this is a wonderful way to get them interested in the microscopic realm. This is just looking at um, one of the gray general areas. Now initially when I was looking at these yellow areas with the naked eye, I was wondering if it was a trace of some kind of a, a sea creature and uh, it wasn't, and I'll show you what they were in a moment. This is the iron ore, and the iron is mixed with the yellow, kind of goldish color, and then you've got black as well, so I'm thinking it's a blend of, of the venous blood and the, the red blood. And here you can start to see what these, these yellow things are. These are actual, like a mossy growth that's on the rock. 
and you can see they're kind of mixed in, eaten away at the, the mineral content. And this is what I was talking about, this, this blend of what I believe is the venous blood with the, the red blood. And now we're getting into quartz crystal, the lines. This is the gray area. And you see more of those little yellow things, which we'll get a close up of in a moment. So this is looking at 500 X and then you can bump it up to 1000 X, which I may have already done here. Again, no traces even at 500 and 1000 X of any coral mollusk shell. And this is what these things look like up close. These are growing on the rock. And look at that. <laughs> It's amazing what's there in the microscopic realm that we never even think about or see. And just to, oh, this is, this is the quartz lines getting in close. You can see it's even got a shimmer and a shine to it. So going back and thinking about trabecular bone, this is how it looks under a microscope. Very similar to this, if you ask me. So uh, that that official narrative of the of the formation of limestone, at, the, at least this particular kind of limestone, um, doesn't really hold up to scrutiny or a 1000x microscope. So as you can see, even at higher magnifications, there are no signs whatsoever of bone or shell fragments as we saw in the limestone photos I showed you before, which are clearly filled with fragments of smaller creatures. My suspicion is that limestone can indeed form in sedimentary layers as mainstream geology teaches us. But the limestone on and around Mont Go is clearly not formed in the same fashion. And based on the branching fractal openings which I believe to be blood vessels, along with the reddish earth, iron ore, and quartz crystal found in and attached to the limestone, I stand by my theory that these are actually pieces of trabecular bone that grew inside the body of a titan.